Welcome to this podcast for the Monday Thursday Epistle Lesson uh, in Series B, namely 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 to 17. I'm Dr. Charles Gieschen, and I'm privileged to speak uh, about the, the Lord's Supper on this, uh, for this very holy night in which we celebrate the institution of the Lord's Supper. Uh, even though one may preach on the Epistle lesson, one is going to naturally connect the uh, Epistle lesson in with the institutional narrative that will be read from uh, the Gospel of Mark, uh, the institution of our Lord's uh, Supper by our Lord. And this text, even though it's quite short, is a wonderful complement to that institution narrative. Why? Uh, it, in a very tight and profound way, it's in the chapter before um, Paul actually narrates his, um, his account of the institution of the Lord's Supper, namely in 1 Corinthians 11. You have Paul making some very pointed comments in the context of his condemnation, his, his um, uh, law proclamation against the Corinthians in terms of some of the abuses of the Lord's Supper. Uh, and he, in the context of, of that kind of condemnation, actually confesses very profoundly and clearly what is offered in the sacrament of the altar, what is offered in the Lord's Supper. Uh, keep in mind that the context of this in 1 Corinthians 10, although it leads into Paul's discussion of the actual institution of the Lord's Supper in chapter 11, here he's talking about the fact of how their practice of the Lord's Supper is sort of, um, while some of them are also engaged in what can be considered idolatrous practices, namely compromising with the, um, with the pagan practices, he mentions this in verse 14. He says, Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. And then right after this, he goes on and he says, and this is verse 19, What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is anything or that an idol is anything? No, I imply what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Shall we provoke the Lord to jealousy or are we stronger than he? So he is condemning these practices where some Corinthians are still involved in partaking of maybe food sacrifice to idols uh, and he basically, or partaking in other pagan practices and he said, these kinds of things cannot be going on while you are committed to your Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this is a meal for those who have withdrawn from those kinds of pagan practices and the worship of pagan, a pagan deity. So it's a wonderful text um, to, um, uh, even though the context is rather challenging, it's a wonderful text that in the midst of this, Paul confesses what we receive, and it's nothing other uh, when we receive this cup, a communion with the blood of Christ and a communion when we break this bread with the body of Christ. So um, as a, as a complement to the institution narrative itself, we have this apostolic confession of the real presence of what we receive it being nothing other than the very body and blood of Christ, what Jesus testifies to in his own institution of the sacrament. So let's move to this brief text, uh, only uh, two verses. We have it here in the board. We start off with this language um, uh, in uh, verse 16 of to poterion tes uh, oi logias. Here you have that language of the cup of blessing. And the reason why you have this language of blessing is it's actually the, both, uh, you, here you have the verb, oi logumenon. Uh, here you have um, the term that's used in the words of institution, where you have Jesus taking the cup and after he had blessed it. 
Uh, so you have the participle form of the, um, of the verb uh, in the words of institution. Here you have the noun uh, describing what this cup is. It's the cup of blessing. It's the cup that Jesus took and blessed and then gave it to his disciples. Uh, and uh, how did he bless it? He said these words, uh, this is my blood um, of, of the new covenant. Uh, so, Paul is basically describing then specifically the wine, which is referred to as this cup of blessing. Uh, here, when he says the cup of blessing, he's referring to the contents of the cup. So, the, cu the cup of blessing, i.e., the wine uh, uh, which we bless, and here that's a reference to the words of institution, uh, is it not... You have uk, not me plus the subjunctive, but uk plus the indicative, because this is a factual statement. Paul is saying, he's not asking a rhetorical question where there's some possibility that this is not uh, a communion with the blood of Christ, but it's a factual statement. So when he says, um, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a communion this is sometimes koinonia, here is sometimes translated participation. I, I think favorable and more understandable in our circles is the word communion. Uh, because it's koinonia uh, is a very uh, important term in Paul emphasizing this union, this fellowship. So the cup of blessing, the wine which is blessed, is it not a communion, a union, a with what? The blood of Christ. So again, here in Paul is one of the most important uh, confessions of the real presence in all of his epistles. This doctrine that we, uh, this teaching that we emphasize on this holy night of Monday, Thursday that as we receive this cup of wine, we are receiving none other than a communion with the very blood of Christ. With this, in, with, and under this, uh, this wine, we receive the very blood of Christ. And you have that very much highlighted here. The language of ta haimatias, the blood of Christ. And keep in mind, this is reflecting the very words of institution. When Jesus said, this, as he lifted the cup, this is my blood of the covenant. Uh, you have it both in um, Luke and in Paul, the, the language of new covenant. But the key language there is, this is my blood of the covenant. And the er emphasis of blood here as I would say if I'm preaching on Monday, Thursday, is emphasizing specifically, as Matthew's account emphasizes, it's the blood that is sacrificially poured out for, for forgiveness. And you have this language then, of, uh, poured out for forgiveness in Matthew's account in Matthew 28, um, 28, and you have this uh, emphasis that this is the very atoning blood that Jesus sacrifices the next day on Good Friday. That is the very blood that is offered to us in this sacrament, and that's why it does something about sin, our sin. It, it uh, offers us forgiveness because it's the atoning blood that won forgiveness that paid the price of our sin at the cross. We are offered the very forgiveness won at the cross through this means. So it's a beautiful expression of real presence. This cup, namely this wine, which is blessed, it's a communion, koinonia, with, in, with, and under that, uh, that uh, wine, we receive the very blood of Christ, the blood that has atoned for all sin. And then you have the, the, op or the other element that's referenced here. It's interesting that he begins with the reference to the blood of Christ. 
And I think he begins with that emphasis because he picks up at the end of, um, in the next verse, he picks up the emphasis with the bread. So by reversing the natural order, which is usually bread, um, as in uh, the bread, which is Christ's body, and then the cup, which is Christ's blood, you have this order reversed. First, Paul talks about the cup, which is the, the blood of Christ, but then he goes to the bread because he's going to pick up in verse 17 this emphasis on bread again. So, in the second half of verse 16, he says, the bread, so that's the other element, which we break. I should have put a green highlight on this. This is your, your present tense, ver, your, your verb, um, which is, is used here uh, with the, in the, um, the subjunctive mood. The bread which we are breaking, is it not, and again, this is the... Um, plus the um, plus the uh, the uki plus the uh, present tense so that's expecting again it's a factual statement uh, it's not a question that Paul is expecting a negative answer to it's of course it is so is it not a koinonia the same term a communion with the in the body of Christ so this emphasis that you have this bread um, uh, that is also offering you the very body of Christ. And again, this is meant to call to mind the very words of institution that uh, Jesus took bread and said, this is my body. Uh, and so Paul uses this language of koinonia to express the mystery that with the bread, we also receive Christ's true body, uh, the body of Christ. Uh, and then after these, these two important confessions, so again, the uki is calling, it's emphasizing these are factual statements. Of course, it is a koinonia with the body of Christ. Of course, it is a koinonia or a communion with the blood of Christ. Then he picks up on this bread, and talks about the oneness. Here you have some different forms in Greek of the, of the word one here. Uh, so because, and here you have this expression, uh, because there is one bread, so here you have the causal statement, because there is one bread, the verb uh, I me is understood in that first phrase, then you have uh, in the second phrase, we who are the many are one body. And again, understood there is the verb to be. So because um, uh, there is one bread, um, we, namely the many people who are part of, uh, who are part of the communion of saints, are one body. So here, I would emphasize in the preaching the unity um, of faith. Namely, there is a profound unity we confess when we commune together uh, in um, the Lord's at the Lord's table. Uh, in the ancient world, uh, one of the most profound expressions. Uh, among Jews of their unity was their eating with uh, those that uh, shared the faith. So we call it, uh, you know, uh, table fellowship. And certainly for Christians, uh, one of the most profound expressions of our unity with others is when we commune at the same table. We are saying we not only share um, a confession of what, is, what we are receiving as we receive the body and blood of Christ, but we are also um, confessing our unity uh, as being one body. So even though we are many different individuals, we are joined together in Christ, and so we have a unity that's expressed in that meal. Uh, so just as there is one bread... Uh, and even though we are many, we are one body. And here, body is used in the sense of because we are partaking of the body of Christ, we are united as then 
the individual members of the one body of Christ, the church. Here, this language of being one body right here is really speaking then of the church. The church as the body of Christ. Then he closes out this statement. Uh, for we all share, right here, for um, we all, right here, um, are sharing, here's your verb, the present tense verb, uh, out of the one bread. So you have that same word, one, used several places. And I think, again, it's expressing our unity. We, we partake of this one bread, so we're, bro we're brought into one body. And that one bread is, is, um, unites us because it's none other than the very body of Christ. It's the, the, the true, real presence of Christ. So in Christ, we have this unity. And here again, the emphasis of all of us, uh, for we all share, uh, right here, the verb, um, out of the one bread. Uh, and again, wonderful theme to uh, emphasize on Monday, Thursday, is not only the real presence spoken of in terms of the cup being the um, a communion with the blood of Christ and the bread being a communion, koinonia, with the body of Christ, but also then our unity because we partake of this one bread, uh, then we are one body even though we are many individuals and that we all are from uh, this one bread. We all partake of this one bread. It's our unity. It's, um, it's what unites us as the communion of saints, not only for one um, hour in church, but for all eternity we'll have this strong unity because we are joined to Christ through his very body and blood. So uh, a wonderful theme to, um, to, uh, to preach on Monday, Thursday, when we think of um, Jesus' beautiful commands in the um, farewell discourse of John about uh, being one in him, uh, loving one another. Um, and, and so how does that uh, lived out? Well, it's lived out uh, in light of Christ's forgiveness that we receive at this table. And that's the basis for our unity. That's the basis for our love for one another. May the Lord bless then uh, your proclamation uh, of this wonderful message of Christ's true body and blood uh, and how he unites us as the church through our partaking of Christ.